Um, from a guy who wanted to know why we don't uh, take the position that no gods exist. And he seemed to think that was very important that we took that position. And I responded to him and explained to him that um, most of us don't take that position because it's not necessary. Um, you know, if I'm interested in hearing what a theist is claiming, then uh, basically making my own claim that no gods exist is kind of a distraction from that. And I don't think it contributes anything to discussing what that theist believes, which is what I'm really interested in, is what you believe, why you believe it. Um, and he seemed to think that it's very important that we validate his position on that. So I'm perplexed about that. Um, I don't know why people need other people to validate their views on these things. If he wants to take that position... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see a problem with fun. saying, hey, can I get a, you know, a check on my logic here? Like, it's right. this, this is how it seems to me, and this is how I'm labeling this, and this is how I'm looking at it, and do you see any faults with it? Like, am right. I missing something here? Uh, and I can kind of understand how somebody would say, you know, am I missing something? Because so many atheists are agnostic atheists. You know? Right. And so I can see somebody saying, I feel like agnostic atheism would be a rational position. Is there some reason that it wouldn't be? Um, for me, it's it's kind of a label question, right? So I tell right. people what I what I believe, why I believe it, and then I tell them if you consider that to be me being Gnostic, then I'm a Gnostic atheist, and I've just explained the reasons. Right. If you consider my position to be agnostic atheism, then I'm an agnostic atheist, and you, because to me, the reasoning behind it is the same. Right. There is no evidence. Mm -hmm. Right, that that we've seen, and it's like until like we talked earlier uh, before the show about the idea of if I tell you that I have a a pen in my hand, and you see the pen in my hand, it is manifest to you, it is manifest to me. There is mm -hmm. the pen, and we agree that I have a pen in my hand. If I tell you I have an elephant in my hand, yeah, now we have a problem because yeah. now you're saying I don't see evidence of yeah. an elephant now. Later, if I can present you evidence that I actually do have an elephant, like, yeah, that's compelling, that would change your mind if you're a rational person, uh, and the evidence is compelling. Mm -hmm. But just the, the claim itself, if, it, if, I, if you don't get compelling evidence that I do have an elephant in my hand, or if you think that it's not possible to have an elephant, I say, oh, the elephant's right. very small, the elephant's yeah. very light, or the elephant... <laughs> Um, I mean, there's all kinds of things that I could tell you about it, but initially, I mean, basically, if you get no compelling evidence for it, you're going to say either I don't believe your claim mm -hmm. or I believe there's no elephant there. Right. And to me, you can kind of take either position based on the same level of evidence. And I do get what people are saying about the idea that just because it can't be proven doesn't mean it's not true. Mm -hmm. And that is correct. And yet, colloquially, all the time, we say that things are not just because there's no evidence. Like, I, if I say to somebody, grab me that uh, apple that's in the basket, and they go over and there's no apple in the basket, they're going to say, there is no apple. They're not going to say, it seems yeah. to me yeah. <laughs> that I there is no apple or, in this basket. I mean, they're going to look, they're not going to see right. an apple, they're going to say, there's no apple in the basket. And, and people talk with that type of language use all the time. Right. So it seems a little special pleading to me when people try to take issue with the fact that, oh, wait, you're saying there is no God, but you can't, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there, or just because you can't prove it doesn't mean it's false. It's like, well, just because I don't see an apple in the basket doesn't mean there's not and some kind of, you know, right weird thing going on where there could be some sort of apple in that basket, and I don't know. And But, yeah. I mean, if it looks just like an empty basket, or if it looks like a, ba a basket of pears or oranges, I mean, maybe I don't see the apple. Maybe it's underneath something right. else. And, you know, or, and the guy went on to describe a process where you would declare that something does not exist, using, you know, Bigfoot and, you know, some other good examples. And I don't disagree with that. But it's the same thing. Do I know that there is no primate living in North America? Well, as far as I know, it seems like no. Right. There's no primates living. I mean, and, nothing and that so, I And so, you know, based on, you know, the absence of evidence where there should be evidence if right. the claim is true, then you could say, yeah, that claim is not true. And you could evaluate gods on, on the same basis, and I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, some gods his, absolutely can't, are, are, are right. logically, you know, logically non-consistent. And, and his thing was, well, why don't you guys do that on the show? And it's like, well, because we're inviting theists to call us and tell us what they believe and why they believe it and why we should believe it too. Yeah. And so I don't actually need to say 
and oh, by the way, you know, your God is an impossibility until I actually hear their claims and understand, you know, how they're evaluating their evidence. And then I might say, no, that God can't exist. Or maybe I'll say, okay, you know, if you're calling the universe God, well, I agree the universe exists. I just don't call yeah. it God, you know. For me, it's just like however somebody wants to label it, all yeah. I'm ultimately saying is the same thing, which is I, ha I have encountered no evidence that is compelling that convinces me that there is such a thing. Mm -hmm. And I fully understand that you know, the evidence could exist and maybe I have not encountered it yet. Right. And, and that's fine. And if some, like I say, if someone calls that Gnostic atheism, then I'm a Gnostic atheist. If they will, if they call it an agnostic atheist, then I'm an agnostic I, I don't care what you call it. That's right. just what I think. And, and getting back to the idea that there's something, you know, there's a different approach for everyone. Yeah. Here because everybody's got something different they want to see. And just because we're not giving you the approach that you would like to see, Maybe there's another show that does. Or you could make your own show if you want to have the uh, I'm the Gnostic Atheist experience or whatever and, and put that out there. You could do that too. So we don't claim to be all things to all people. Yeah, exactly. With that, I guess if we want to move to a call here. We have other emails, by the way. We're going to talk a little bit about some emails today. <laughs> yeah, we've got some other things.